Tony Stark is all about continuous improvement, relentless, ceaseless continuous improvement. Nothing is sacred, everything is a work in progress. What is that, like Mark 15? Uh, yeah, something like that. You know, everybody needs a hobby. Oh. He is never satisfied with the current iteration, and so is always looking for ways to increase his suit's performance. In short, I tinker. Now, in doing all this, Tony Stark uses two management methodologies, Lean and Six Sigma. Let's start with Lean. Lean's goal is to ensure that every step in the process adds value and minimizes actions, resources, or time spent. To Lean, waste comes in many forms, such as transport, the movement of materials that doesn't add any value, or inventory, holding excess material that isn't required for the current project. Then there's motion, extra steps taken due to inefficient workspace layouts, and of course, waiting, periods of inactivity while the work is delayed. There's also overproduction, producing more than is immediately needed, and overprocessing, reworking things, extra processing, or unnecessary steps that don't add value. Then, of course, there are defects. We're talking about errors or variations that fail to meet expectations. And finally, underutilized skills. This is failing to fully leverage your potential and your abilities, or the potential and abilities of those on your team. To identify and remove these types of waste, Lean uses a workplace organization process called the five S's, or 5S, however you want to say that. The five S's are as follows. Seidi, or sort. Seiton, or set in order. Seiso, or shine. Seiketsu, or standardize. Shitsuke, or sustain. So Lean was developed by some folks over at Toyota in Japan. So yeah, that's why all the original words are are Japanese. It has been a long time since Hanasu Nihongo, so forgive the pronunciation. Just by looking at Tony Stark's workshop, it's clear that he follows lean principles in the organization and layout of his shop. Now, we don't get the chance to see the inception of his workplace, him setting it all up and so forth, but we can see it in my own. In my case, I followed lean, or a semblance of it anyway, when organizing my own shop in preparation for restoring my 1965 MG Midget. Yeah, Tony Stark's working on a hot rod, I'm working on a sports car, <laughs> yeah. He and I are like totally bros. In Lean, the goal is to create a streamlined, organized workspace by eliminating anything that doesn't add value to the car restoration process. Decluttering the garage and turning it into a functional workspace, that's the idea. As you can see, my workspace was anything but functional. So this is what I did. First, sorted, or Saidi. I went through everything in the garage and separated out the tools and items I needed specifically for the restoration. I cleared away unnecessary clutter, broken tools, and random items that just frankly didn't support the project. I don't need them. Set in order, or seito. I then arranged the remaining tools and parts in a way that minimized wasted motion. I placed tools that were more associated with the restoration in one area, while general tools such as saws and hammers and so forth I placed in another. I also grouped similar items together, labeling drawers and bins to make it easier to find what I needed when I needed it. Say so, or shined. I thoroughly cleaned the space, dusting, sweeping, and wiping down all the surfaces so that I could work efficiently and effectively. I also established a cleaning routine to keep the workspace nice and tidy. I really like a tidy space. Standardization, or seikatsu. I set up habits and systems to keep everything organized, like hanging the pegboard for tools, and then I installed shelves to, you know, basically hold parts and so forth. I made sure that everything had a designated home so that everything could be easily and neatly put away after each day's work. Sustained, or shitsuke. 
I committed to maintaining this setup by putting things back in place after each session and sticking to my cleaning routine. I also periodically reevaluate things to make sure that everything is working as intended and make adjustments as needed because, you know, things change as the project progresses. By following these principles, I've been able to convert my garage into a organized, pleasant, and inviting workspace perfect for working on the car. Now, that's lean, so let's have a look at Six Sigma. Getting the workshop up and running and keeping it that way, well, that's just the beginning. All this gives me is a great place in which to work, but then comes the work itself. This is where Six Sigma comes into play. Six Sigma is a data-driven methodology used to improve business processes by identifying and reducing variations and defects. It uses a structured approach called DMAIC or something like that. It stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. It uses this process to enhance quality, consistency, and efficiency in every step. Following this DMAIC process, I still don't know how to pronounce that, we first start with define. This means identifying the problem that we want to solve. We then go on to measure. This means collecting the data we need to really understand the current state of the issue. Then we analyze, examine the data to determine the root causes of the problem. We then move on to improve. This means implementing solutions to address root causes and improve the process going forward. We then finish with control. This means monitoring changes to ensure continued success and prevent reoccurrence of the problem. We can actually see Tony Stark following these processes as he develops the Mark II Iron Man suit. Define. Measure. Analyze. Improve. Control. In working on my own sports car, yeah, I like to call it a sports car. It's a sports car. I can call it a sports car. Here is how I will follow this process. Define. So my goal, the problem is that the car doesn't run. So I want to get the car running again. This means the engine running. And this would be the first time in 15 years. So first, I need to identify the specific problem with the engine. Next, I'll measure. I'll need to collect data on the current state of the engine. In my case, this means checking for fuel, spark, and compression, all the things you need to get an engine running. Next is analyze. I'll need to then examine the data that I've collected to pinpoint the root cause of the problem. By the way, there's going to be lots of root causes. Many, many, many many root causes. Then I get to do improve. Once I know the root issues, I can implement solutions based on my analysis, like replace or repair any faulty parts, lots of faulty parts, adjust the timing, the fuel mixture, clean and lubricate parts, things like that. Anything I need to do to resolve the root issue. I'll then be able to move on to control, assuming any of this works, I'll get the engine running. And then I'll have to monitor it over time to ensure that the fixes that I made hold and that the problem doesn't return. Like the car breaking down in the middle of the Alpine loop. I mean, what are the odds? Significant. So there you go. As you can see, there's a little more to Tony Stark's tinkering than the word may suggest. But it's also not rocket science. Apply these same principles to your own workflow and you will be surprised at how much you can accomplish. All right, that's all for today. So go off and make some trouble. We'll see you later.